not activities. It's not going around in a van in community. It's making a difference. It's being a member. But people with disabilities can't become members unless the people who stand with and by them every day also become heroes and also see the work as a journey that they're going to take. There's, there's a lot of personal growth and a lot of self-discovery in this field. Uh, you just have to remain open to it. As a direct support professional, it's, it's really all about being involved one-on-one -on -one and supporting in whatever way I can. And that's why it's really useful to be able to work intimately one-on-one -on -one with folks because the support I'm able to provide can be a lot more relevant. The key to a life of distinction is how much is a person really growing in their relationships in the community? How much are they really becoming a member? And that's a really different goal to reach for in our work with people with disabilities is how well are we doing at helping people have a really rich and varied life that's embedded in relationships in the community. People with disabilities are just like everybody else and have the same feelings, wants, desires, needs that everyone else has. And I think recognizing that is very, very important. I get the personal satisfaction of where I see people start from one place and move to the next. It doesn't have to be super complex, uh, you know, physical fitness or a, a learning program or anything like that. It can just be watching somebody order their own coffee in Starbucks, say thank you, and pay for their own coffee. I've certainly noticed some great changes and tremendous swings from being very thrilled about the deinstitutionalization effort. And I thought that we really can't get any better than this. And isn't it great that we have a home for 14 people? To look at where we are today, where a family member or an individual with disabilities would say, thanks for bringing us this far. That's not what we want anymore. What we want is, is complete participation in the life of the community, and we want you to help us to navigate that in a way that makes our life fulfilling. And we hope that you have the skills to serve us that way. In order to do that, the, the people who are engineering this, the, the, those who are, are working day to day with people with disabilities, have to be, in a sense, so skilled, so dedicated, and so principled much more than 30 years ago or 20 years ago or 10 years ago. The expectations have risen dramatically. just there to take care of maybe the medical needs of the person, but you're trying to get them involved in things going out in the world. You're trying to help them expand their world and find out what they're good at. When direct support professionals have a chance to really make a difference in people's lives, the jobs become far more meaningful and the journey to help people become real members of community life is much more interesting than the jobs used to be. You need to give away being self-centered and you need to be able to be who that person that you're serving needs you to be. This field, when you walk in, you the first thought is, oh, I'm getting paid to hang out with someone. <laughs> I'm getting paid to be a friend. And you are, you're getting paid to hang out, you're getting paid to be a friend, you're getting paid to think and care about someone. But most importantly, you're getting paid to respect someone, to treat the people that you support with respect, with honor, with dignity. And that's, I think that's why professional is there in the title.
I would like direct support staff to support me because they're the key people in my life and I would want them to be able to help me to do the things that I need to do and to be there when I really need them. I feel uh, honored and humble, you know, that I'm given the opportunity to uh, work with individuals um, who have a disability and to share my experience, uh, my guidance, direction, and assistance uh, to them who are willing, you know, to just want to be a part of living a richer life. I started nine years ago as being a part-time DSP, and I loved it and just decided to continue. I love my job. I love my job. I love my job. I love my job. I love helping people. I love listening to people. I love being a direct support professional. I think it's the best thing for me. I can't see me doing anything else. I don't want to do anything else. It is the most rewarding job you could possibly do. I like the people. Plain and simple. I, I like the people I work with. I look forward to coming here in the morning. It's a joy to come to work. I feel good when I help people. This is the only job that I can say that I'm giving back. I can't imagine doing anything else. I'll always be involved in this field. I don't know how to describe this, but there is a, there is a certain draw, there's a certain magic that, that comes with other people wanting to do what it is that you do because they experience this as noble. One of the reasons or the main reasons why this is such a rewarding position is because it betters yourself just as it's helping an individual better themselves. Anybody that has ever said, boy, I get more out of this than I've, I've ever given, you can multiply that times 100, and that's what the human services is. Not too many careers can say that they actually have such a positive impact and uh, change the outlook or the infrastructure of a person's daily living. You're in for the time of your life. If you want to do this, if you want to meet the expectations of people with disabilities, you will find this work so incredibly rewarding that it'll be the defining moment of who you are. There is going to be an increasing need to take care of not only people with disabilities, but uh, baby boomers who are, who, are, uh, who are getting older. And the workforce demographic, that labor pool that we're drawing on, is actually shrinking as the need is growing. Fewer people are really going to be required to do more of the work. And if that's the case, then they better be good at what it is that they do. They are and need to be recognized as professionals. I hate to be so, so cut and dry with the answer to this, but there's one main thing that an organization can do to hold on to their direct support professionals, recognize them. Recognition is important because it gives staff, empowers staff, it gives them a, a sense of accomplishment, a sense of value. Every profession has a code of ethics, um, up to and including the profession of direct support. And did anybody know that? Did you know that there was a, Adam, you knew it. Thank you. Did you know there was a code of ethics for what you do? One of the reasons that direct support work has been a crisis in our field is because we've yet to shift our assumptions about who are direct support professionals. As long as we consider them to be cogs in a wheel to provide coverage and basically maintain people, then turnover rates are high, job satisfaction is really low, and 
It's not something people could easily feel passionate about. They're doing something really significant and important with their life. There's no question in my mind that DSPs are responsible for social change every single day.